This I is remember him, but only vaguely. It's like he didn't make much of an impression on me the last time. Odd, but then lots of things from my last visit here are vague and odd. All those years, and it was right here under my nose. This looks interesting. The first dreamer references in the annals of dreaming. Uh, that's this book right here. And the chapter about the first dream. It's certainly a starting point. Let's see what it says. Can you read that book? I've lived in Arcadia for decades, and there hasn't been much to do aside from studying ancient texts, so yes, I can read this book. Let's see, the chapter in question speaks of the Ular. They are said to be wardens of the Dreaming One, whatever that means. It's a rough translation, the English language isn't quite up to the task. The Ular and the Yete, one people that split into two, that sounds familiar. It says here the Yete left the Purple Mountains to go south to burrow into the ground something about a well of dreams. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true and how much is fantasy or prophecy. It's a, a difficult book to decipher. There's also something about two dreamers becoming one? It's vague. This is almost certainly a prophecy of some sort. The Ular live on Cloud Peak. It's in the mountains of Yedra. Where's that on the map? Ah, there it is. Straight north across the plains, right in the middle of the border mountains. This is an old book, so... I don't know if they still live there. I've never heard of the Ular. They might all be dead. That note fell out of the annals when Westhouse turned the pages. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. I knew it! It's another one of Abnaxus's notes. Let's see. There. Cloud Peak, just like the book said. Fascinating. This is it. This shows the way to the Purple Mountains. I'm sure Abnaxus won't mind me borrowing this. I'll return it to him in person, if I make it to Cloud Peak. I'll need to write all of this down before I forget it. This note fell out from the pages of the annals. What's a soulless stone? I'm not sure. The soul stone was taken from Luke's by the warlock Clax. It must be retrieved or the past, present and future will cease to be. That sounds ominous. It does indeed. I don't know about any soul stone, but I'm guessing this Clax fellow does. I wonder if Abnaxus means old Roper Clax. April told me his story. He was a two-bit wizard who resided in a floating castle up north near the border mountains. April said she taught him a lesson. She didn't get into any details, but he lost his castle. Last I heard, he's doing children's theater here in town. Reformed, apparently, if that's a thing a wizard is capable of. Sounds like this soul stone is important. Abnoxus left so much behind. There's a wealth of information here. Let's 
Let's see. Oh, I knew there. it. I knew Cloud it. Cloud Peak, just like the book said. This is it. This shows the way to the Purple Mountains. I should get going. Should we... Would you mind terribly if I stayed here to read these books? Well, this is... it's private property, isn't it? Obnoxus isn't coming back, and I've been itching for a chance to peruse his library for years now. I promise I won't remove anything or make a mess. It doesn't look like Brian's gonna do any damage to the place. He's respectful and curious. It couldn't hurt to let him stay. He might have the best of intentions, but I made a promise to blind Bob. I'd feel awful if anything happened to Obnaxus's abode. It doesn't look like Brian's... I guess... Okay. I mean, it's not my house. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Castillo. I hope our paths cross again very soon. Didn't you say something about a wizard and a puppet show? Nope. No, you did. You said something about a show in the square. I did not. Crow. Oh, right, right! Roper Clax's Fingerlings! Man, that show's great. A modern classic. Clax. He's the wizard April Ryan fought. That's right. He was behaving badly, so she fought him and trapped him inside some sort of calculating machine. Pretty clever stuff. Where can I find this puppet show? I'll show you. He's gonna be so good. Roper clacks, I presume. He looks wizardly, as in how I expected wizards to look when I was ten. If you seek an autograph, you must purchase my book first. It's on sale today. Only... No, sorry. I, I need to talk to you. Talk, hmm? Well, I only have a few minutes before my show begins, but I'm sure I can spare a couple of them for a pretty young thing like you. Didn't he and April have some sort of conference? It's an... didn't... it's an... odd name for a children's puppet show. This has to be the right man. You are Roper Clax, right? The wizard? Who told you that? Well, that sign, for one. No, the... the wizard part. Who told you? I mean, uh, I'm merely a humble finger puppeteer trying to make an honest living in a cold and heartless world. <laughs> but you were a wizard once. Fully rehabilitated, I don't go anywhere near sorcery, not anymore. You should really read my highly acclaimed and best-selling memoir, A Farewell to My Wizarding Ways. 
It's a thrilling story of redemption and romance, of dashing heroes and wicked villainesses, of flying castles and curious calculating devices. Every word of it as true as the night is dark and the day is bright, of course. <laughs> it's an odd name for a children's puppet show. The Fingerlings. Ah, my beloved finger puppets, beloved by all children and critics alike. Gilbert Grutton of the Daily Mercurian called my show simply astonishing and wrote that it was quite impossible to look away. I couldn't believe my eyes and like a slow motion cart wreck. You see, the fingerlings represent a revolution in finger puppeteering, or as I call it, fingering, uh, trademark and patent pending. The women in particular are quite ecstatic about it. Stay for the show. I guarantee a good time. Didn't he and April have some sort of confrontation? Do you remember April Ryan? April Ryan? Oh, yes, of course, absolutely, certainly, naturally, the bit <clears throat> The brave young woman who came to my castle and stole it and helped me put my sorceress past behind me. How could I possibly forget? He's obviously got some issues with April. I'd be curious to learn more. So, about April. Why, why does everyone want to talk about April Ryan? She was just a weak little human who stumbled onto things she didn't... <clears throat> no, 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 I must apologize. You see, April and I had some disagreements in the past. I'm past that now. I'm a different person. <laughs> As for April Ryan, yeah, yeah, she suffered an ignoble death at the hands of our Azadi benefactors. What a shame. What a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> I might as well. Do you recall owning a soul stone? A soul stone? I... I don't know what you're talking about. I was just wondering, since there are so many impressive tales about your powers where I come from. And where would that be? Um... That was a long time ago. In another life, I've moved on. I'm a different person now in every way. I was just wondering what happened to the stone. She took it, that bitch. Balance? Pardon me? I don't know where that came from. Who? The Yaga, the wicked witch of the north, as these simpletons call her. As if they have any idea who and what she truly is. She lurks in Riverwood in the dark places. She feeds on that stone like a... <clears throat> like I said, that's in the past, and I've left it all behind long ago. Now I make an honest living bringing joy to children through my most excellent and revolutionary finger puppet theater. And on that note, I must beg your pardon, young miss. The show is about to begin. <laughs> Can we please talk again afterwards? I have some more questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely after the show. After the show, yes, 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 yes. Toodaloo! Yes, here we go. This is gonna be so good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and, well, humans, and you, Azadi soldier standing over there, you're welcome to watch, just don't rattle your sabers or rustle your suits. Uh, welcome to this morning's performance of The Fingerlings. Uh, I am your host and puppeteer, Rupa Klax, esteemed thespian and raconteur, author and entrepreneur. My book is available for purchase with a free, personalized dedication. Speak to me after the show. 
a donation is both appreciated and expected, drop your coins into the box after the show. Remember that every iron piece goes towards a good purpose. Woohoo! Go fingerlings! My beloved fingerlings! Handcrafted reproductions of renowned actors from across Arcadia immortalized in finger puppet form by skilled artisans. Using only the finest fabrics and natural materials, these lovely creatures are as dear to me as children and as talented and protean as the finest human players. You're all welcome to approach the stage after the show, of course, to admire my finely crafted miniatures up close and intimately. No food, no touching, no children. And now, beloved audience, prepare yourselves for a journey into mystery for a true story of wizardry and magic. I present to you the tale of the good-hearted wizard and the villainous winch. Once upon a time in the distant north, there lived a kindly old wizard in a wonderful flying castle. This very friendly wizard liked to tease and toy with the people of the land, and sometimes he would do silly things like uh, turn them into stone or furry animals and bottle up the wind. <laughs> Naturally, he meant no harm, and the people of the land loved the wizard like they would a grandfather, a very young and very, very handsome grandfather. But one day, an evil sorceress from a distant land came to visit the kindly wizard. This ugly, selfish witch didn't understand that the wizard was only trying to make people happy. She used her dark sorcery to steal all of his possessions and trap him inside a tiny little box where the gentle wizard was barely able to breathe. The poor old man was trapped for many moons inside this box before a benevolent wandering god arrived to free him from his prison. The wizard pledged eternal allegiance to the wandering god in return for vengeance against the cruel witch who trapped him. Together they... There he is, Commander. The dangerous loon who's corrupting our youth with his occult finger rings. What? What's this? What? What are you doing? What's going on? You can't... Hey! Hey! Hands off! You're teaching children of magic, old man. You ought to know better. Release me, you dishonorable brute! By the authority vested in me by the Greater Azadi Empire and the Emissary, and in accordance with provisional imperial law prohibiting any and all teachings of occult magic, I'm taking you into custody. You can't do this! You don't know who I am! Tell it to the magistrate, wizard. My fingerlings! My precious handcrafted fingerlings! No! I cannot believe that they arrested him. What a travesty. I didn't see that coming. I guess the Azadi aren't fans of creepy puppet shows either. I think it had more to do with him being a wizard. Okay, shit. So what now? He was my only lead to the Soul Stone. All I have to go on is something about a Yaga and Riverwood. Riverwood? I know Riverwood. I've been to Riverwood. If it's Riverwood you need, I know how to get to Riverwood. Really? And the Yaga? The Wicker Witch? I don't know anything about Yagas, but I do know something about witches in Riverwood. On my last trip there, we had a close encounter with one of them. That witch is toast, of course, but I can probably find my way back to Riverwood. It's north. We go north. Wait, which way is up? Yeah, north! Okay. Uh, okay. That's something, right? Much better than nothing. 
We just need a way to get north that doesn't involve me walking all the way. Or me flying. I'm not flying all that way. I tire easily. Wait. I feel a cunning plan coming on. Follow me, Zoe. Uh-oh. It's either a cunning plan or I need the toilet. But I'm pretty sure it's a cunning plan. I still can't believe you pulled off the voice and the whole fake hand thing. The hat looked great on you. Oh, totally. Uh, not so sure about the beard, though. My face is itchy. Speaking of faces, I can never show mine in Mercuria again. Not after that last bit we did. If everything goes well, you won't have to. At least we have a ride. Can I trust this thing? They're docile cows, the Elguan. Just leave it to me. Mush, Daisy! Mush! Whoa, whoa, I think you're upsetting her. I'll, uh, I'll leave the cowgirling to you. I'll fly ahead and scout the terrain instead. Don't lose sight of me! How much longer will this journey take? Must be nearly a week now. It's been less than two days, and I'm beginning to regret bringing you along. You're stuck in the cargo hold of a cloud ship with your worst enemy. How could you possibly have any regrets? And people say you have no sense of humor. If there was ever a time to make peace with Liko, this is likely it. Maybe there's still a chance to create a bond between us. We're on a mission. This is neither the time nor place to make peace with Liko. We already fight side by side. That's our bond. Besides, if there was ever a time to make peace with Liko, this is likely it. I'm sorry about your father. I know that may not amount to much now, but I was a different person then. I was blind to the possibility that there could be more than one truth. There's been so much death on the road to this place. I murdered an innocent man during my escape from Friar's Keep. He begged me to, but I still don't know if I did the right thing. I killed the Warden. And for what? For justice? For revenge? Jakai's aunt was sentenced to death. I don't see how the Warden's death can make up for that. And I worry about Jakai. I watched Balse Bakim bleed to death so that I could make my escape through a blood magic portal. I still wonder if his sacrifice was worth it. Have I repaid that debt? Shepard believes so. But many thought him a better man than I, so why did he have to die? I've murdered my own countrymen when I've judged them unworthy of life. What did I gain from these actions? What did it change? What would have been different had I acted differently? All of these choices, Liko, they add up. My soul is heavy. The others believe me unaffected because I carry on as if nothing happened. But their faces and voices are there when I close my eyes. Those deaths never leave me. No words can undo these deeds. There are no excuses for the wrongs I've committed. But I am trying to heal the wounds I've inflicted. It's a long journey, Liko. And I know. When you arrived from Friar's Keep, I wanted you dead. Really? I couldn't tell. And people say you have no sense of humor. They do? We've been through much since then. I believe I know you. A little. You've taken up arms against your own people, risking shame, death, and your immortal soul. Because you believe they're misguided. It cannot be easy being hated and feared by both sides. I may still despise you because you murdered my father. I may still dislike you because you're an arrogant and intolerant shit. But I respect you, Kian. And I trust you. That trust goes both ways, Liko. Well, 
I'm taking a nap. This half of the hold is mine. Stick to your side, or I may stab you in my sleep. Don't worry. I've no intention of cuddling up next to you. Kian, are you awake? I wasn't. This has now changed. Did I ever tell you how my society views people like us? I don't believe so. The Dole and Tiqua consider themselves tolerant and inclusive in all matters. And yet I've always had to hide who I am from my family and friends. If they knew the truth, I'd be ostracized. Tolerance, it seems, has its limits. But in the Resistance, no one cares. This thing we share? It doesn't change how they feel about us. It's strange. Strange, but liberating. With the Resistance, you are who and what you decide to be. Regardless of color and creed, gender and religion, and... I thought you loved April Ryan. I did. I do, but... Not like that. She was someone I cared deeply about, and always will. But I could never have shared my life with her. I still miss her every day. She gave me strength. Nah, I'm going back to sleep. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. A day of sitting in the dark, bickering about who passed gas? Like I said, a long day. I mean, that hurt. Never trust an Elguan, cowardly cows. Oh, something must have spooked it. What do we do now? This place looks familiar. I think we're close. In fact, I think we're... Leave! Go, or I'll call the others! Whoa, hey there, I'm, I'm friendly and, and unarmed. You're human. You can't be fr... Bird? Crowbird? Hello. Hey, you're that fretful furry thing we met the first time we came through here. Ben... Franklin. Ben Bandu. This isn't the same human who accompanied you last time. This is my new human. She's mostly harmless. Say hello, Zoe. Don't be rude. I guess... hello? Hello? Hello. Are you the new Bandu Mbata? Bamboo... what? No, I have no idea. I'm Zoe. You're a dreamer. So they keep saying. I'm not very good at it. How did you know? We live close to the dreaming here. Her dreams surround us. The Yaga. That's it! That's the one we're looking for, right, Zoe? The Yaga! You're... you're looking for the Yaga? Are, on purpose? Are you mad? Oh, I'm not. Her? I'm not so sure about. You know the Yaga? She lives in this forest. We do not speak her name. She's... She's mean. We'll save time if we ask the Ewok to show us the way to the Yaga. We need to find her right now, but we can't bring Furball with us. Teddy Bear probably knows more about the Yaga. Who is she? The... Yaga? 
She's old. Really old. She's been around since long before my people came to this forest. Once, she had many servants. Witches, warlocks, evil ones. Like in the stories told by the elders. But her servants are all gone now. So she woke up and crossed into our world. She doesn't belong here. But she's lonely and hungry. Hungry. Great. Well, we still have to find her. She has the Soul Stone. The Soul Stone? I've heard of the Soul Stone. The Yaga took it from the fallen fortress of her warlock. Warlock? Roper Clax worked for the Yaga? They all did. The Gribbler, Clax, all the evil witches and warlocks of the Northlands. But they're gone now. Just like my people. April Ryan imprisoned the warlock and killed the witch. She saved us all. But then... Then the Azadi came with sharp blades and metal tubes that spewed fire. They murdered most of us. Some fled east. I'm the only one left here now. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. One day, they'll come back. All the surviving Banda. Until then, I watch over their burrows. And I sing. For them. For all of us. This soul stone. It's important? Very. You'll use it to fight the Azadi? That's part of it, yes. I'll take you to the Yaga. Or as close as I dare go to her lair anyway. Great! I was expecting you to say no, and by expecting, I mean hoping. Does the bird always speak like that? I'm afraid so. Lead the way, Ben. The Yaga's beyond the ridge. Once you cross that, you're in her realm. You're not coming with? Did you not hear me when I said she was hungry? No, I'm not coming with you. The walls of that place are thin, and she can smell my magic. A wise decision, tiny man. Come on, Zoe, let's turn around and head back with Ben Ben. Maybe catch a fat squirrel and roast it for dinner? This is what we came here for. If we don't get the Soul Stone... Everyone dies, the world ends, no more Christmases, blah, blah, blah. I'm so sick of walking into one perilous scenario after the other. After we're done with this one, no more adventures. I swear to the Feather Gods of old. You'll know you're there when you see the Gribbler's old house. She was the witch who lived here before. The Gribbler served the Yaga, and that's where she came through from the beyond. Will you wait for us, Ben? I'll wait until nightfall. But if you're not back by then... We'll be back. And I had such a craving for Crispy Squirrel. of ravens I don't feel very welcome I mean this isn't just a bad sign it's all the bad signs all at once like a grab bag of ill omens there are plenty of stones lying about let's just pick one and pretend it's the soul stone it's not like anyone would know what it's supposed to look like
I'm glad I have Crow here. Regardless of how useless he may be at times, he's still company. I'll take company over no company any time. My tiny bird heart. I have a bad feeling about this, Zoe. This smell. Dogs doo doo, incense, and rotting flesh. Smells like witches, all right. Is it my imagination? Or is the light changing? Is it getting darker? Am I going blind? Help! Do you hear voices? I hear voices. I don't like disembodied voices. Disembodied voices are never a good sign. Strange. I felt this way before when I was... when I was in a coma. Inside story time. I must be on the border between waking and dreams. never left. It's too late to save us. Save yourself! Go! Weeds and vines, covering everything. So what now? Do we just go up and knock on the door? I don't see a doorbell. <laughs> no, this is neither the time nor place for levity. Oh, I know. Is that where the Yaga lives? It looks like a house. I mean, a scary house, sure, but still just a house. Who bothers me? Who bothers the Yaga? 
Okay, so maybe not just a house after all. You have something that's not yours. Leave, monkey. Not until you give me the soul stone. We do not know what you speak of. Whoa. My whole body's tingling. I can change things. I can manipulate this dream. Cool. There are three mines in there, but which one's the Yaga? I can hear several voices, all of them angry. It's so loud, so strong, I can't... I can't keep listening, she's too strong. I don't want to fight you, I just want to talk to you. I don't think she wants to give up the Soul Stone. Stop trying to kill me!
Oh, this sucks. Wait, the sky? Is this story time? But it's not like how I remember it. It looks... older. It looks a lot... older. you a clever monkey? Hush, sister. Don't speak to it. Just let it lose itself in the dark. It'll weaken, and then we can eat it. It'll probably taste honey sweet, like a newborn babe. Do not underestimate this one, sisters. There's something different about it. Hello? Your eyes grow heavy. Sleep. We'll watch over you. Show yourselves. 